There it goes. It says we're live. Okay, we're a few minutes late, and um, I'm waiting for the browser to come up with so I can see comments again. Um, it says I'm live. Okay, okay. We should be we should be good to go. I'm sorry for the technical technological glitch. Um, I have, if, if you watched the, if you were watching live, I introduced my friend Dallas, Dallas Amsden, who has, uh, has a, a podcast, uh, defeating depression podcast. I met Dallas at an event called launch out where he talked about, uh, talked about how he has, he has dealt with depression. And so he is technically, he has run. <laughs> he doesn't call himself a runner, <laughs> but but we'll talk. Well, I'll bring him on. We'll, we'll we'll talk to we'll talk about that a little bit. So uh, so yes, this is this is the ultra marathon mindset podcast. But uh, but with everything that's been going on, and uh, the, there's just a lot of us are are struggling with just having days that well, as Dallas said to me the, yesterday, I've had better days, and so a lot of us have had better days. And uh, so with what we're dealing with now, we're looking to get back to those better days. And so Dallas has some, has some experience with, with the ups and downs of having good days and bad days. So I'm going to bring Dallas on and we'll talk about things running and, uh, and, other th uh, and all things. It's, oh, I forgot, to, I forgot to add my little cute little graphic at the bottom. So um, this is Trail Talk. <laughs> and... Dallas, good to have you on. Um, the, you you said you told me that you have actually run on a trail. Now I have, I have. <laughs> it was it was one of the most brutal experiences of my life. <laughs> um, so I I had I had a yeah I had ex, I first of all thank you for having me on with you. No, yes, thank you. I, I it's I, this is this is a new show. I'm still trying to. Trying to get all of the technical technological ins and outs and uh, and kind of learn what I'm doing is doing here. So, uh, so I, th I appreciate you being patient and. and <laughs> well, and and for those for everybody watching, um, I was on, but I was on in Firefox, and and the plugin you're using works in Chrome. So when we solved that, we solved everything. Yeah. And I have only used every problem were that easy. <laughs> yeah, and I haven't used Firefox for years, and so it just I I think everyone in the world uses Chrome, <laughs> and so it just I do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just depends on which email I'm using. So yeah, I for some things I use Safari, for some things I use Firefox, for some things I use Chrome. I understand. Okay, trail trail running. You said you have run on a trail. Yeah, uh, last, not four months ago, but um, but uh, sixteen months ago, I I uh, raced in something called the Winter Warrior, and it was a uh, it was a ten k trail race. And I have to be honest, it was one of those things where I was doing I was working with a coach at the time, and they had challenged me to um, there were challenge there were quarterly challenges, and some were physical, some were spiritual, etc. Um, and so for the physical, it, you could not pick a weight loss goal. You could not pick a, um, like, a, just a measurement goal. You had to pick something competitive. And mm -hmm. so, uh, so I had looked at several things and actually my inclination was to compete in, in a ring of some sort. My inclination was like, well, what if I did like a amateur boxing night or, a, you know, just some <laughs> crazy thing like that? Why not go all uh, the way and go for MMA? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I honestly, I was looking at everything to keep myself from doing the run. Um, and then, uh, nothing was happening at the end of that quarter except for races. And so it was this winter warrior trail race. It happened in mid February. It was like February 10th or something. Um, I did not know when I signed up, Eric, I didn't know it was a trail race. So I had been training on pavement. Mm -hmm. I had been training just on the roads. I had never gone off road. Um, and, uh, and it was a 10 K it wasn't that huge. It wasn't like a big thing, <laughs> but it was, it was the longest competitive race I had ever done. Cause I had done a couple of five Ks and, okay. and, um, and I used to run a lot during soccer, um, uh, back in the day, but, 
my fitness and and don't get me started but my fitness usually comes from crossfit so um yeah. so this was a a different this was a different venture for mm -hmm. me and um so i trained on just flat paths slight elevations concrete paved and i arrive at this park and it's 28 degrees and it's sleeting mm -hmm. i am underdressed okay um, I'm not prepared for it. And then they're like, hey, you're going to run this field and then you guys are going to head up in the trail. And I went, huh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you had road shoes as well. Uh, I had road shoes as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well. I didn't have trail shoes as well. I had cross trainers, but no, oh. yeah, yeah, no, they sucked. Um, so, so anyway, we're running this field and, uh, there was a point halfway on this race where you could split off and you could do the 5k thing mm -hmm. or you could continue on. And not many people chose the 5k race. Um, and I hadn't chose the 5k race. I had signed up for the 10k, but when I hit that point and I'm watching it come, I'm watching the sign that shows the split off. Um, my mind went into overdrive of you did not train for this. Just go home. You're cold. <laughs> you're cold. You're wet. You're, uh, you're under trained for the trail thing. Uh, you're muddy now. Like there was just a bunch, a bunch of stuff going through my brain and it was, uh, you, you do not belong out here. Uh, cause everybody out there was trained really well. And I'm, I was getting passed. I was getting passed by people. I should on a, on a paved road. I would not have been getting passed by these folks. <laughs> um, you, you name it. They shouldn't have been passing me. Um, so. I had that moment as I was jogging up toward jogging up toward the split where I thought, go home, go home. And, um, and then I thought to myself, well, what the heck you're here. You're already miserable. It's mm -hmm. going to be a 90 minute drive home, cold and wet, whether you do it or not. So you might as well finish. You got it. And I think it was a, uh, it was a 90 minute cap on the race. Okay. okay. Um, if I remember correctly. And, uh, that was one of those moments where I was like, I, I had an opportunity to build mental toughness, mm -hmm. um, and to challenge myself beyond, uh, beyond what really beyond what my training had prepared me for. Um, now again, this was a small race. I've never done the type of race as you have done. Um, mine are hour long Metcons and like. A, a, you know, a one mile run to start your with a dumbbell and a barbell, and mm -hmm. then you have to buy out with a one mile run. So for me, and and like now I'm running um, two times this week, I ran uh, just four or five miles just by myself. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't trained since then. But what was cool about that moment, and I came in uh, fourth to last of everybody. Uh-huh. Yes. of the race. I mean, there were a, like, it was the sort of thing where as I'm jogging, I look behind me at one point and I'm seeing the people pick up the flags about, <laughs> yeah. you know, about, uh, about yeah. a quarter of a mile behind me. I'm like, Oh man, crap. I'm gonna, well, they're, at they're least they literally going to pick mile. up the flags before I finish this thing. I, I had, I had the, I had the people picking up the flags behind me. And and it's like they were like a hundred yards behind me, and and yeah. they were having to they were having to wait at the aid stations because they were picking up flags faster than I was running. Yeah, that's that's basically how I felt, and and um, and so I, I I finished out the race, and there was no sense of first of all, I have never experienced the runner's high in mm -hmm. all my years. I've never experienced that. I experienced the high of winning. I experienced the high of getting the points, finishing, you know, all of that stuff. But again, I I kind of live my life in sprints. So so this was an opportunity to stretch my mindset toward longer term thinking. Mm -hmm. um, even in my business, I do things in little short sprints. I set short term goals that I can hit and celebrate and move on. Um, so this adding a little distance actually was a really intriguing thing for me because it allowed me to, um, I wouldn't, I would say strengthen, but I would more say lengthen my mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and it's interesting, the thing that you, the things that you described, your, the, 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 the thought process and the feelings that you described were the same things almost every ultra marathon runner 
faces. In fact, some sure. some some Around of us, mile 50. <laughs> some of us face those. <laughs> some of those some of us face those like several times during the race, and sure, and, you know the the uh, the desire the the mental voice that says you should just quit. You know, yeah. and and all all the things that you listed. I I'm not prepared for this. Other people are passing me. Uh, I'm I'm not you know I'm not measuring up. I'm I'm going to be last. I I I physically can't make it. I should just go home. You know, it just it would all be over if I would just quit. Right. That's you know it it's not the distance. I mean that that anytime you're in that kind of uncomfortable situation, anytime you're any time you're trying to push yourself to the next levels like that, something you've never done, or even if you have done it before. Those are the things that come up, and that yeah. that mindset of of learning how to negotiate between your mind and your body to continue. And you know, there's a lot of different things. The thing that you said, well, I'm here. You know, I'm I'm going to be cold and wet no matter. What. I'm, I'm nowhere <laughs> and, else to be right now. This is what I plan to do. One of the, one of the guys in my running group, he was he was running a hundred miler, and he had a he had an injury, and he he ran through the injury, and he said. I may never do this ever again. I'm not going to mm. stop now. And so there's there's a lot of things that, that you can and, – and, again, it's not the distance. It's the, the mindset to con, that that whatever it takes to keep you moving forward. And, and you, you experience that in a shorter time frame, but it's the same, right. it's the same thing. Uh, well, and, and um, you know, it's funny we're having this conversation because I've been listening to David Goggins, uh, his book. Uh-huh. Uh, he can't can't hurt me. Can't hurt. And me, I've yeah. been listening to the audiobook, and he he says the phrase "callous your mind," and um, just like you know, I have calluses on my hand here mm -hmm. from the barbell and from pull ups and all of that stuff, um, and we have to build those same toughened places up in our mind. And I def that was definitely one of the. There are other areas of my life that I have calloused my mind in such a way that I can push through the pain, mm -hmm. but that in that particular instance, um, I had not developed a callus there. <laughs> other than other than, um, I actually utilized a little bit of frustration at myself during that run, where I was like, ah, "You're, you're, they're literally picking up flags behind you. Mm -hmm. You wuss, go." <laughs> yeah. And like everything in me wanted to stop. And I'm like, don't even move to a walk. Keep your feet moving a little faster. And um and it was uh it was not a it was not a fun experience. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you people do it. <laughs> Cause I'm like, this was not fun for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I have I have heard from some other people who run who say that they they don't enjoy running they enjoy having run and so mm. they they like they will go out and do you know, whatever like self yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i they don't go enjoy out and it but i enjoyed that it happened <laughs> that it happened yeah <laughs> well and you know that that you can apply that to a lot of things. I mean, there's there right. are th there are things that you look back on in your life and it's like, oh, that was that was sucked the whole time that I did it. Yep. But I'm glad I had that experience. And Absolutely. Uh, and so, you know, I'm I'm a runner that I enjoy running. You know, I I went out and and even the times when I feel, you know, there you have those ups and downs and you feel like you can't go on and you push through and um, you know, I just I enjoy I enjoy the event, the doing it, the doing of it, and and I'm not as competitive as you are. So, uh, the you know I, I felt felt like kind of a little bit. I, I felt f when they were picking up flags behind me. Yeah, I still felt like like I'm still moving. That was that was the thing I told myself. I am I yeah. am I'm on my last lap. I'm still gonna, I'm going to finish this race. And, well, and uh, I definitely felt that at the end. I definitely felt like you did it. Mm -hmm. You didn't you didn't enjoy it. You didn't want to do it halfway through you wanted to quit but you finished mm -hmm. and so i definitely felt the um if it if it wasn't that endorphin rush of the runner's high it was the it was the dopamine of the the pat on my back yes and and for a lot of 
a lot of runners. That is, I mean, as and ultra marathon runners especially, because we will get into those those times in the in the middle of the night when everything is going wrong, right. and and you tell yourself you know, this, and your body hurts, and you're like, I'm never doing this again. And then the next morning when you cross the finish line, and you you're like, when's the next race? Yeah, because um, you know, in the middle in the middle it's of <laughs> in the middle of the pain and 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 the you know the middle of the night when when you feel like it just you can't go on yeah if you if you push if you push through that well and even if you don't even if you don't even if you don't make it there's something about it is like okay once that's over your mind goes you know that i i, I lived through it and let's right. try it again let's try it again in that in that interesting your body immediately is like hey you did all right mm -hmm. you survived <laughs> yeah don't you want to try that again only better only better yeah i can yeah. train better and you you go through and and it and that's that is specific to runners. I mean, that I hear I hear that uh, from sure. from runners that uh, there's, there's just something about it. It we go through the pain, we go through it. It's hard, uh, but as a, but you know, and so I, when I was introducing you on the first first time, I said you're you're a CrossFit person. You're not really a runner because a runner will go back and go and have that terrible experience and say, oh yeah, I'm going to do it again. And and you kind right. of said like, no, I've I did that. That's fine. I'm, I'm well, I'm, I've considered it. I actually I did consider it until everything occurred recently that shut everything down. <laughs> um, this little minor incident that's taken place um, because I, I was actually looking at uh, I, I had talked with my wife about the two of us training together for a race oh, uh -huh. and actually running together. Cause she loves to run. Um, her running stories are way better than mine. I mean, she's, uh, <laughs> I, I, um, in, in the draft of my book that I'm working on right now, I tell a story about her, uh, a running experience she had when she was competing in hurdle racing. Uh -huh. And um, she she's just way more of, of a runner type than me. And her stride is naturally longer. Like my my torso is eight, eight inches longer than hers, but my legs are about six inches shorter. You know, I mean, it's like <laughs> mm -hmm. she's got this much longer stride. So she naturally runs a little bit faster. Um, but but for her, it's one of those things where she really enjoys it. And I would say, um, I would say I've considered again. And and one of the things you mentioned in that. Do you hear that? I hear that. I have no that, idea I what that no is. Idea what that is either. That is something. Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea what that was. <laughs> I'm in my office and there is literally nothing in that corner. That uh -huh. was kind of freaky. <laughs> That's and it's going off again. I wanted to tell this really great story about running. Can you uh -huh. hold on one second? Sure, yeah. Find out what that it, it sounds like brilliant. It, I'm gonna look at what this is. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like some sort of a toy that's that's going off. <laughs> I figured that was the case because we, uh, my oh, daughter and her, her kids. That was my 10 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Standing outside my office door with a phone mm -hmm. doing a thing. Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody who's watching, I apologize yeah. for that. <laughs> well, apparently I, my wife didn't tell my 10 year old dad's going on a live Facebook feed. Well, I, I had, uh, I had made the announcement in our household because, uh, the four, four grandkids live here and, uh, then uh, they, they, of course, forgot. So just before the call, I had to go out and remind them, okay. <laughs> so, sure. so, yeah, I, I understand yeah. when, when there's kids in the house, it's like, yeah, you can't well, control all, all the noise. Well, crazy right now. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you so remember anyway, your running, I was about to tell story? this great story where I was going to, like, delve all this revelation and drop some deep truth bombs on you. And then he had a thing going. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's my boy Lex. So proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, the the thing I was going to say was you you had mentioned that like middle of the night that that middle of the night moment and um, there is something that kicks in I think for all of us at some point with that I remember um, and I had put a podcast episode about this out I called it the win in the trees 
not the wind mm -hmm. in the trees, but the wind in the trees. And I, I was jogging one afternoon. It was, it, it was late in the evening, actually. The sun was starting to set. And um, I, I was going longer than I had gone, but my pace had picked up. I was like, my, my per mile pace had, had picked up. Um, I had actually, over the course of my training, shaved two minutes off my per mile pace. Wow, that's very good. Yeah. Well, and granted, it was like from couch to run, to race. So I was mm -hmm. gonna I mm -hmm. was gonna shave a big chunk off um, just by the by following the training regimen. But um, but I remember it was this evening, and it was like it was it was starting to get chilly. Um, and I'm running and all of a sudden I'm like, find myself in this moment where I'm listening to the wind in the trees mm -hmm. and my imagination kicked in where it sounded like a crowd cheering. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I could like, Shh, yeah, yeah. I could like hear this crowd going for it with me. And I was like, yeah. And I picked up my pace. And um, again, it was one of the longer distances I had run during the training regimen. But when I tapped into, as weird as it sounds, when I tapped into and connected with nature on it, um, it was, I, it sounds weird, but I was like, I could feel nature cheering me on. It was actually a really fun experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's it was cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. So I, I, and I was, I introduced you, I, I talked a little bit about you before you came on in the live that was probably was not going to get saved because we had technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> heard the so, Everest comment so, before I came yeah, on. Yeah, so. the, the Everest comment that, uh, yeah, that won't, that won't make it. But, uh, but, and I don't know that I announced it this time is that you're a podcaster. Uh, you have a podcast, Defeating Depression. And, and I didn't know you were writing a book, but uh uh, yeah, you and I've had some conversations uh, on a regular basis, uh, just about our our business, uh, our business life. You're you're uh, coaching in a mm -hmm. in a very similar way that I as as I am, and so uh, we've been able to compare notes and some of the things that we've been doing online. And so uh, we'd met at a conference, kind of made made a connection, and have had, have kept that. So we we have a, we have a weekly. You know, most of the time we, we we hit it. We have a weekly time. We get together yeah. and just kind of check in with each other. So that's For that's how I know plus, I mean. Dallas. And and uh, so his podcast, Defeating Depression. Uh, I said you've had a little more experience with the uh, with the low points of life and uh, some strategies. And so since since there are people who are facing facing those low points now, uh, and, and, and maybe not having the tools to deal with them, I wanted to have you come on and, and kind of tell your, I, and I want to give you the freedom to tell your story. When I call this trail talk, and when, when runners run out onto the trail, our, the kind of the understanding is, is like what's, what's said on the trail stays on the trail. And mm. so, uh, like I've, yeah, like Vegas. Yeah. But, but trail runners, we tend to, we tend to see everyone. We we get we show our friends ourselves at the worst because we're hot, we're sweaty, we we don't smell good, um, and and there's the barriers break down, and so we end up having conversations about you know bodily functions, uh, sure. th <laughs> things all things that things that have yeah all of it. I mean there, it's 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 very. Uh, it's very unfiltered conversations, and uh, and and it's we just have there's we there's not a lot of social barriers or stigma, and so uh, we we talk about we talk about almost anything without any kind of feeling of of shyness. Uh, so I I that's that's kind of the I want the spirit of that trail sure. talk to be part of what what I do here. But but also I know this is a public forum so forum so I want to give you the freedom to hey you know, I, I want to say to be relaxed to share share as much uh, about your story as you want but I want to give you the freedom to to kind of I tell your that. story because uh, uh, yeah I think that would be helpful uh, so yeah I'll, I'll give you the give you the well cut me off at any here. point so. if I get if I get too dark no <laughs> I've got a button um, here I've got a button here I can <laughs> I, can, I can end it at any time. Um, so when people when people look at me they and and when they hear me talking and and when people hear me speak on stage and things like that uh it's hard for them to believe the level of depression that with which I dealt um and and uh and I and I think that's a really intriguing thing first of all is the many faces 
of depression uh, and, and depression and anxiety. And, and I'll talk a little bit about both of them here in a minute. Um, both of them have many faces and they wear many masks and they wear many disguises. And so when you talk about getting real out on the trail, um, I think that's the most important and most powerful thing that we can do in our battle for mental health as well, whether it's depression, anxiety, bipolar disorder, suicidal ideation, whatever it might be. Um, to give you an, to give you an example, I was I, I did a was running with a, a lady, and I and we she was she was we we were running together and uh, spent spent some time and I ended up I told her things that I don't tell. I mean Brenda knows you know my wife sure. knows she knows everything, but I, I mean I told told this lady stuff about my history that I mean I like never even never had said before just because yeah and I, and I told her I says not many people know what I told just told you um, yeah. So, so that kind well, of, I'm yeah. proud of the fact that you can even talk when you're running a hundred miles, but good for you. <laughs> no, um, this wasn't, this was training for the hundred miles. We were oh, running okay, a sh okay. much shorter training. distance. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? I'd be like, leave me alone. That's all you would get out of me as I'm pumping my arm. Um, so, so we lived in Los Angeles at the time and, um, I had grown up, my parents were pastors. I had grown up in a church, um, uh, faithfully followed Jesus my whole life and, um, still do. Um, and some of the pursuits we pursued were what we thought God had called us to. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I found in, uh, and, and this is not going to be a bunch of Christianese. So if you're watching this, don't, don't think, Oh God, he's about to like, tell me why I need to follow <laughs> Jesus. I think you should follow Jesus, yeah. but we'll, we'll, that's a different conversation. <laughs> well, well, that's, that's part of that. That's not uh, part of this that's conversation. A right that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a different, that's a different, different topic. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, we were pursuing what we thought God had called us to do. And we lived in LA at the time and we were working in the, in the industry. Um, I was working as an actor um, and I was getting, I was getting some work um, realized it wasn't what I wanted to do. And so it kind of felt like, okay, you know, that was a little margin off from what I had planned in my, in my mind for my life. And, um, and then I started uh, trying to send out some scripts and was working as a writer because writing is also a strong suit of mine. Communication in general mm -hmm. uh, is where I've just lived most of my life. But it was a lot of delays and a lot of detours along the uh, for the dreams and a lot of denials and just just a lot of that spiraling and um and none of it was working out like i had pl planned or hoped um or dreamed or my mm -hmm. wife and i had dreamed not just you know it was life um and you you set yourself up for the training and then you rely and then you have to rely on it when you're in the middle of the night in the run mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you have to rely on it when you're looking at the 5k turn off versus the 10k marathon of mm -hmm. your world um and uh i had so there was there was a lot of self-destructive behavior there was a lot of um i would uh i would binge drink um or binge eat i just to me sedation came through like what can i put in my mouth mm -hmm. um and uh and how can i sedate the frustration how can i sedate the pain how can i numb uh the disappointment that i feel as though um i'm not living up to either the expectation of others or of myself and i haven't attained or any of that stuff so um i was i was getting things times were getting darker and darker um and we had some we had a couple of really big dark nights. Um, I was talking with this recently with um, the Families for Depression Awareness. They're a nonprofit group. And we talked about some of the dark um, times that we went through and some of what my, how my wife had to stand so strong. Mm -hmm. um, and this was about eight, eight or nine years ago now. Um, 2000, yeah, eight years ago. Um, and it got it got to a point one night where I held a knife to my throat um, and was just like, I'm done with this. I'm done wrestling with God. I'm done pursuing anything. I'm 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 over all of it. Um, and I wasn't gonna. I was. I want to be very careful here because suicidal ideation uh, was something that crossed my mind a few times, but it never got to the point of 
taking any action to attempt. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then what broke for my wife was there was there was that incident, and then there was another thing that we've talked about on the podcast where we called it the Great Pancake Sedation, and basically um, <laughs> I I went through a series of bad nights in a row, and I woke up one morning and something triggered me. I forget what it was. But I went in and I started mixing up a, some pancake batter and I poured on the skillet the biggest pancake that you could possibly imagine. And um, and I covered it, swathed it in butter and syrup. And I looked at her uh, as she was just like, what's going on? And I looked at her and I said, I know exactly what I'm doing right now and I don't care. Hmm. As I just like stuffed this pancake into my mouth. So you said this is the middle of, middle of the night? Uh, that one happened in the morning. In so the, morning, the middle okay. of the, night, the middle of the night was um, was the threat of the knife, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> and then I ended up I ended up actually doing some cutting on my arm at that mm-hmm. point. Okay. And um, you know, this was a guy. This wasn't like a teen. I had never cut before when I was a teenager or anything like that. Um, this was a guy who just wanted to do anything he could to to numb the numb the 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 war in my mind Mm -hmm. and numb the pain in my body Mm -hmm. um and so there was not healthy choices along the way well after after i had that morning where um and and i should say too i worked as an apartment manager at the time because i was writing and i was performing stand-up comedy so i mean like nothing is more cliche in hollywood (laughs) than a stand-up comic needing a therapist Mm -hmm. um but I was I was I was writing in the evenings. I was performing stand up comedy. Uh, we had just had our first son, and um, or he I guess he was about two at that point. Um, and then during the day, I was working as an apartment manager uh, for a hundred plus tenants, and it was just, everything was draining me. Nothing mm-hmm. was fulfilling. Everything was draining, um, and I was I was I just needed to feel. So anyway, I would literally walk from our apartment right into my office and take phone calls and be like, hey, you need to come see a tour. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so my wife came in that afternoon and she put down a piece of paper that had five names of therapists on it. And she said, you don't get a choice other than you have to pick one of these five. They're covered by our insurance. You have to go do it. And again, I felt like it was very cliche. Uh, to go to a therapist. I'm like, I'm not going to a therapist. She's like, you do not have a choice. I am done dealing with all this stuff. So you need to go talk to somebody. So I did. Um, I sat in that first meeting. He asked me a series of questions and I found out I was in the 95th percentile for major depressive disorder and severe anxiety disorder. Um, Basically the one thing keeping me from being in the top 1% of major depressive disorder was that I had not attempted anything Mm -hmm. um but everything else was there all the all the other signs lined up so when he showed me the the results of the test the numbers you know it's an interesting thing when you see numbers you go oh i can see where things need to improve Mm -hmm. uh whether whether it's on a depression scale or whether it's on a, a you know your run training or whatever it might be um so anyway i started seeing him and um things didn't get better at first i ended up going on medication for a period of time uh i'm not on medication now but i I did go on medication for about a year and a half almost two years um the first medication i was on actually took me to a darker place it didn't work and this is something i um tell people all the time when i'm talking with them so if you're watching this or listening to this uh not every medication is going to work. It has different results in different people. So if you're about three to four weeks into medication and you're feeling worse, you need to be talking to your psychiatrist about it. I do not recommend, and neither do most therapists, (laughs) I do not recommend getting uh, a... um, any sort of mental health medication from a general practitioner you need to be talking you need to be combining your um your medication from a psychiatrist with talk therapy with either a psychologist or that psychiatrist if they're so trained um but to just have your gp write you a prescription can be dangerous because you're not processing through the issues um Mm -hmm. so so anyway total 
that's my <laughs> that's my uh, little uh, public service announcement is uh, go to combine medication with talk therapy. It's so important. And um, the first medication I took did not work. Things got darker. Then they switched me up about four weeks in and I told my psychiatrist, look, I'm the ideations are getting worse and I'm beginning to think of plans of how this is going to finish. And um, she was like, okay, you are not on the right medication. Let's level that out. She switched me up three weeks later. And she said, bear with me, this is going to take about three, four weeks for you to come down off the one and get regulated on the other. And, um, and it started working. But for what worked best for me, Eric, was um, I was, I was in therapy, I was on medication, but then my psychologist said, why don't you start joining me for some group sessions? And I thought, that's intriguing. Okay. Why not? We've already done all the other, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's that same thing. I'm already here. Yeah. You know, we're happy to do this. Thing. Might, as well finish it out. <laughs> Might as well finish. I'm wet and cold yeah. already. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I decided on the 10 K path instead of the five K and, uh, and I, um, started going to group therapy. And what I realized in that was there was actually a depth in me that I was able to pour out to other people. And um, there was truth and there was insight that I had. I was like, oh, this makes sense. I, I can now help others. And I mean, there was even one session where the therapist said at the end, he said, I don't, I don't even know why I was here. I felt like Dallas should have coached you all through it, <laughs> which was funny. Um, and it was mainly because I was just asking questions for me to other people. I was like, well, how do you deal with such and such? And it got them talking. And then I'd ask them another question. But in all of the questions, I was getting answers. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's an important thing in life. I think too many of us seek answers without asking questions. Um, we want we want a definitive thing versus being willing to struggle with the hard questions. Mm-hmm. Um, and so so group therapy was really helping me. I started getting really good breakthroughs, um, started seeing some personal breakthroughs, started developing healthier habits. and um, And then... It was actually the conference that you and I met at, that was the, um, I think that was the third one of the launch out conferences yes. I had been to. Mm-hmm. It, so it, the first one I, um, I had been introduced to, to the group uh, through my sister, actually. And um, I spoke at the event and it went great and, and I did my thing and I, kn- I know how to be on a microphone and I know how to be on a stage. And so it works, but I didn't, I, you know, there was still a mask. It was still um, the pretender thing. And then the second year at the conference, I was actually, um, I'm listening to the pulse of the room and I had gotten, I get, I had been accepted to speak again and I turned in my outline a month before and I did all the stuff and I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to the pulse of the room and I was at a point in my mental health where I thought, yeah, I can hear I can hear the general theme in this room and it, and what I'm about to talk about is going to be good, but it's not appropriate for this group. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to the head of the thing. Um, It was the person before me had just started talking and I went to uh, his name was Randy. And I said, Randy, I got to change my talk. I need to talk about my depression. And he was like, okay. I said, we don't have to run slides. We don't have to do anything like that. Let me just, let me take my time and talk about my depression. And he looked at me and he goes, I trust you, which was awesome. And um, so I got up on that stage and it was right before lunch. I was the last person before lunch. And, uh, and I, I stopped and I said, Hey everybody, um, my name is Dallas and I have never said this out loud and I'm getting emotional as I talk about it right now. Um, It was the first time I had ever told anybody out loud. I had had that I, what I had struggled with, that I was struggling with depression. Mm -hmm. And the moment I said, I'm an entrepreneur and I suffer from major depressive disorder, you could have heard a pin drop in the room. Because the event was for entrepreneurs. The event was for entrepreneurs. And it was one of those things where everybody, you know, a lot of people had been like tweeting their notes or, or taking notes on their phone. And it was literally like every phone went down and every eye locked. And, um, we, um, I then talked for about the next 
13, 14 minutes uh, about my depression. And I had, I had enough time where I was able to come up with three quick, Hey, if I say these three things, I know we'll get to the target. But it was one of those things where um, it allowed such an openness and an honesty in the room to occur um, that I, that after I was done, the host, the person, the MC, got back up on the mic and he said, "I'm glad we've got lunch now because I think we all need to sit in this moment." Mm -hmm. And um, there was, I don't know, ninety to a hundred people maybe at that event, and. Um, and I probably had 30 or 40 of them come up and find me over the course of the weekend. Hey, this is me. Hey, this is my spouse. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm a pastor, and, and I have people come and talk to me about this. And I left that event saying, okay, I'm, I, I think I'm ready to start telling my story. And, um, and I, I got on a microphone, and I started going 10 minutes a day, five days a week. And just that's how the podcast started a, a couple of years ago. And it was called Defeating Depression. Um, I haven't produced any episodes the last couple of months because of uh, multiple reasons. But, um, but about a year into it of just me five days a week going at it 10 minutes and just telling it was basically like a story, a revelation, and then an application. is It's like, hey, mm -hmm. this happened to me today. Mm -hmm. The win in the trees. Mm -hmm. Here's what I learned from it, and here's how you can apply it in your life for a daily dose to defeat depression. I started bringing on after that, though, about a year year plus into it, I started bringing on psychologists, authors, therapists, and we started going 45, 50 minutes, just two people, one to one. And I found those to be not only incredibly educational for me, um, but the the messages and the emails I get and the private Facebook messages and the stuff that we get inside of our um, private Facebook group is just, um, you can tell that it's resonating with people and it's a conversation mm -hmm. that people need to have of, man, I'm in this dark place and I need a community of support. I need people of encouragement and I need insights and tools to help me overcome this in the same way i would say eric if i were to apply this to a running conversation how how do you how do you get 100 miles one step at a time mm -hmm. right it's mm -hmm. this next step then it's this this next quarter mile then this next mile then this next set of 10 or whatever it might be um, and in CrossFit, we would say it's the next rep if you think about all the reps you've got in front of you you will implode yes but if you just go no it's this next box jump or this next step on their trail. Um, and sometimes that's all we can do in our depression too, is we can say, I just need to make it not through today. I need to make it through the next minute. I need to make it through the next hour, whatever it might be. Now, I, I there are other tools and other strategies that I have learned, um, but the, the strength of the revelation of the I, the concept of present moment awareness mm -hmm. has been one of the biggest tools that I've been able to use in in um, transforming my mental health. Now I just I just got hit with about a depression this last week. Um, the I hit the wall on several things, and I I describe it to people as I could see the train coming down the tracks. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I see that train coming down the tracks, I step out of the way. Other times I lay down on the track, and I'm like, hey, this thing's going to hit me. And 100% transparency, real raw, it hit me this weekend. And on Saturday, um, I, I ended up napping for like three hours. And then on Sunday, I ended up, uh, granted, we're, we're stuck in the house a lot. Um, but... Uh, but I ended up taking two different naps. And for me, I have found that um, taking a nap is a much healthier choice than some of the old sedation techniques I mm -hmm. would have used. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Monday morning, I said, it's time to pick myself up off the track. It's time to get my exercise back in. It's time to eat, clean up, clean up the nutrition again. Um, because it, I'm, the, the episodes when they happen now are less and less and fewer and far between. Mm -hmm. So it used to be a two, three day episode would occur or a three or four day episode would occur like every week or every other week. So half of my time was gone. Um, and now it's like every couple of months I'll hit a two day episode. Mm -hmm. um, so so, do so you, the strides when, are happening. When, when you 
feel that coming on when you're when you you say you say the the train's coming down the tracks and when when it hits you when when you're in that episode do you kind of like give yourself a time frame of saying okay i know this i know sometimes. that this is going to end that sometimes that um that not not that not that you not that you can can choose that necessarily but but you kind of give yourself it's like okay I, i'm in this and yeah this this is not going to last forever uh it, this is going to end in two days and if and if it's not in two days then it's like you'll say well one more day and you know but but you you see in the middle of it you see an end point is that so, is that what you're saying um i i, I forget who it was i um it was some – there was a story I, I remember hearing, an anecdote, and I think it was some actor. It was their mother um, when they were growing up, and they said, how long is this pity party going to last? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, and they learned – might have been like Denzel or something. I can't remember the story exactly, but um, they learned to put a time limit on it. I would say, I would say um, usually for me – it's midday Sundays is like if it hits me on a Wednesday and I'm like got to suffer through Thursday, Friday doing mm -hmm. work, then I know Saturday, Sunday has got to be a crash and a reset. Mm -hmm. um, and usually by Sunday evening, I'm, I'm pulling out my, I'm pulling out my um, target list for the next week. And I'm saying to myself, okay, tomorrow morning, if I hit this and this, I know I'll be back on it. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I put a, I wouldn't say I put a, Hey, you've got 48 hours to get out of this. You sucker mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so much as depending on when it falls in the calendar, I will literally, um, like this last week, Thursday, I had to plod through cause I knew it was happening. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just have to get through Thursday. And then Friday I had meetings from 9 a.m. to 1 30 p.m. I was like, as soon as 1.30 hits, I'm putting my calendar on Do Not Disturb. I'm not taking another call mm -hmm. uh, with another client. And um, and so it was like I had a little end in mind. And I said to my wife, I was like, hey, just so you know, Friday night, I gotta, I'm gotta, i going to bed early. She's like, okay. She could tell it. You know, She knew it mm -hmm. was happening. Mm -hmm. um, and she, we now have a language between the two of us that um, – you know, I can talk with her about it. I can, um, with everything we've learned from the very, I mean, I've talked with some amazing people globally, talked with like a emeritus professor at the University of Sussex in England, mm -hmm. someone in Spain, someone in, you know, I mean, I've talked with people all over, um, thought leaders in this subject. And so I'm able to glean the best stuff. And my, my wife, obviously, um, she and I have developed that language now where for her it's she can see it when the mo she calls it the monster over my shoulder mm -hmm. i call it the train coming down the track um but she knows when i say to her hey i need i need a reset she's like do it take care of it go unplug is her mm -hmm. word for it mm -hmm. so so we have our language for it um usually if i'm about the 36 hour mark of uh, not wanting to get out of the bed because I have to help with the kids and everything too. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to help with them even when they come in and disturb me in the middle <laughs> of a Facebook live interview. Um, that was the weirdest noise, by the way. That but, was a um, weird noise. It sounded like a Chinese person on the phone. He, he he put a he put a he put a derp. Do you know what derps are? No. Okay. I, I... Don't even worry about it. <laughs> a derp is like these little weird random hand-drawn characters but they make noises like derp 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 okay okay and it was a derp was what he had on the phone and it was like <laughs> repeating for an hour and i'm like what are you doing go away <laughs> anyway um total total side note um but what it is is she'll say to me too is what do you need to do to get back on track mm -hmm. and and then there's sometimes and again right now it's it's not, uh, hey, go throw the iron around, because that's usually what it is. Is she knows if I can, if I will go lift weights, mm -hmm. I'll feel better within like mm -hmm. forty five minutes. Um, but but she'll say uh, right now she'll be like, hey, go put on, go put on one of the CrossFit workouts and just do it in the in the living room or mm -hmm. go to the backyard and do it. Um, 
And uh, so she's very, she's filled with grace during those times. And she's also um, filled, she helps me strategize. If, if I can't, most of the time I can strategize now mm -hmm. and know it, this ends on Sunday afternoon so that I can get ready for the week. Cause if I, if I go into Sunday night, um, with, without the reset, then Monday is going to be a show. Mm -hmm. Not a good show. <laughs> Not a good show. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a, a a name that they they give that yeah, show. That's so, exactly yeah. the kind of show I'm talking about. We, we can't um, say it on Facebook though. <laughs> no, no. Um, but uh, I, it's so funny. You know, I'm I'm at this point in the conversation now where I have talked so much, and usually I'm the one doing the interview. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like I haven't let you talk at all. Well, no, Is no. You you want to interject? No, no. I mean, I, it's just the. I, I think the thing I wanted to find out, to to bring this I mean uh, the to bring this around is that um, if if someone sees this who's who's you know maybe not to the same depths of what you are but uh, you know and I I think I can't remember if I said it in this edition or whether it was the the, the uh, previous one that we had technical difficulties but you know I have I have been in places I think everyone gets in a place where where we have that that feeling and you know i would i would you know and i always say if if someone asks i feel depressed yeah. and that i you know I, I feel that that level of and it just and and it physically and mentally and emotionally it's the same as what you experience but it's just not the same depth it's sure. it's and so and for 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 everyone i mean when we we all think you know, we all feel what happens to us much more personally than, I mean, I can hear, you can hear a story, people would hear your story. They may not have, not have the same level of depression, but they still have the same, they still have feelings that are similar. And sure. so what, what I'd say is what, what would be something that, you know, what would be a suggestion for people who are at that level to start to try to, and especially with this time, I mean, we're all stuck at home. We've got kids, you know, kids going crazy. We, we, you know, so in fact, there are some people who are runners. I've, I've, I've heard from runners that they can't leave the house to run even, uh, or oh, they wow. can, um, it's depending My neighborhood upon it's filled with runners right now. Well, Every, and that's all of us are running and, and that's, and that's the reason that they have shut down some states, some states, sure. um, that, uh, so, yeah. And, and so, uh, um, and the, there was, it was, I think it was Chicago, the mayor of Chicago told people, uh, you know, quit, quit going out and running. She said, you can't go out and run, a, you can't go out and run a 5k, you, right. you know, you can do like, and so they're, they're depending on where it is that I've, I've heard, and I don't know, you know, the, the full details, but I've heard that there are some places where there's restrictions. You can't go much more than like down the block. Um, yeah. and, and so I've heard of people running laps in their yard, uh, sure. and, or, I mean, God forbid running on a treadmill there. Now there are some people who choose to run on a treadmill and love it, but Do you think this is just one big conspiracy from Nordic track like, yes. trying to get their tails back up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Peloton. <laughs> Peloton is like Peloton crushing is, it right yeah, now. Yeah. Crushing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, um, yeah. I don't know. I've, I've heard numerous conspiracy theories and, and oh yeah been, no we don't need to get into yeah. those on there that's <laughs> a that's a different trail talk there conspiracy theories are entertaining but yeah. uh but yeah i kind of take them with a grain of, grain of salt but uh but no they uh so you know they're so if like for me i mean you said your your strategies go go do crossfit for me you know if i if i miss my runs if i if i cut back on my mileage I start feeling this, you know, just like yeah. this uh, constipation almost, you know, just like feeling like things are not moving through my, through my mind yeah, and body sure. like they should. So, so yeah, I guess what, what can you, what, what do you have to offer with, uh, with people who are, who are maybe facing this and maybe for the first time, because for, sure. for, mo for a lot of us, we go out and we hit work hard and then we run and we, and we, and we fill our lives with so much work and events and and you know staying on the on the move and going and going and going and going yeah and or tv or, or pick your thing or like you know or, or alcohol and we fill our lives up with so much to to distract from having to face some of the things that we have to face now because all of that stuff has been stripped away so 
Yeah. Well, I would say um, there's a couple of a couple of things I and I would start with. There are different levels of depression. There's everything from a, you know a situational depression. A uh, this could be you may d be depressed because you lost a loved one recently, or mm -hmm. you had a breakup, or you had a move, or a job loss. Those are those are temporary situational depressions. There's seasonal affective disorder, mm -hmm. um, uh, SAD, sad, and um, that's a seasonal depression. There could be a postpartum depression for women, um, and 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 men can can experience their version of a postpartum. Um, but the one that I deal with is what's known as chronic depression. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, and that's the major depressive disorder. The, th the biggest trick is, um, there's several, and we talked about present moment awareness mm -hmm. is one of them. Um, there's another, as, as the season is changing now, and you may be limited in what you can do as far as going out and maybe running in your neighborhood or running, a couple of miles around, like um, I know a gentleman who actually, uh, my kid and his kid, they go to martial arts together. He has qualified for Boston for the marathon. Well, for, the, for this year? Yeah, okay. but he's obviously not yeah. um, going to be running that. But man, we, we were seeing him out. He's not been out running very much because uh, he, he lives just about two miles from here. Um, and uh, the there's a technique called earthing which um in your in your body you can just you can um again there's a lot of things you can do but there's one technique um i think for our society that's built on this idea of moving and moving and moving and going and going and never stopping and we go from work to running to filling our calendar to the social media to this that and the other i think um i think we have a real opportunity for stillness right now mm -hmm. which is its own emotional release and it's um in the same way that i was not tr i was ill equipped for 10k on that cold sleet filled day <laughs> that, that's pretty in well that in your memory way. yeah <clears throat> yeah but i was mm -hmm. ill equipped for it um i think we are we are ill equipped for using the muscle of stillness Mm -hmm. So I think this is an opportunity to actually train a different muscle if we're used to going and going and going. So um, I use, a, I use a, a, an app called Insight Timer, okay. and it's a meditation app. And you can either just set a timer with like a chime and nothing. You can have music, you can have nature sounds, or you can have a narrated guided mm -hmm. meditation. Mm -hmm. And um, I have found that to be an incredible thing. I mentioned earthing a minute ago. Earthing is simply standing in the grass in bare feet Yes, for about 15 to 20 minutes. And basically the science behind it is your body builds up all of these free radicals in it. And it's like, it's like taking the prongs of a, um, uh, my thing is mirrored here. So I'm going opposite. Yeah. <laughs> it's like taking the, it's like taking the prongs of a plug and um, you remove the positive and negative charge and you just are using the ground. Yes. On it. And it, it literally neutralizes all the buildup. And so we ground ourselves to the earth and we just walk barefoot in the grass. And for me, I do just, I look like a zoo animal probably. <laughs> I'm just going 10 paces back and forth. Or sometimes I just stand completely still barefoot in the grass. And I find that just 10 to 15 minutes of that, like I feel better. Mm -hmm. It's crazy, but I feel now, better. Now it doesn't work on concrete or asphalt, I'm imagining. No, if you can, it's if you be. you if you can find a path, a patch of earth. I do know that earthing.com also has earthing uh, kits and earthing okay. pads. Mm -hmm. um, they are not paying me for this, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, they basically like I could have one here under my desk, and it literally just has the ground charge. Okay, in it. It doesn't okay. have the so positive and, and actually and it actually in. connects. Does it connect through your electrical system? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And that would that and would so, work. Yeah, and that would work. And it's again, that's earthing.com, and they have all sorts of earthing kits everything mm -hmm. from just the pad for your desk to um, little patches of the fake grass. Well, they have grommets uh, that you can put in your bottom of your shoes with yes. copper. So that yeah. was, uh, I've, I've seen similar that, thing. So, so that it, uh, so that as you're walking, well, you still have to walk out on, on the grass, but you yeah. can, you can have shoes on and the copper will transmit and will connect you to the, to the earth. So I would also, I would also challenge everybody again, you're, you're used to this, you're used to going out and running 
you know, 10, 12, 15, 30 miles on a weekend, whatever you might be doing, if you're, especially if you're training for an ultra, um, or if you're just training for anything and you just want to run five miles a day, whatever it might be, you definitely, um, what you are doing is you are using the same muscle group over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So you've conditioned those muscles. And the challenge I would have for you in this time would be what other muscles could you try to use? Could you try yoga? Right mm -hmm. now, would yoga give you a sensation? Could you try? Could you try something that's a little more body weight exercises, air squats, running in place, muscle or uh, mountain climbers, push ups, um, yeah, push ups, core, core work. Burpees. Core work is oh, great God. for runners. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, core work, burpees. I love them. I hate them. They suck, mm -hmm. but they're amazing. Mm -hmm. um, there's there's a lot of stuff you can do that I would just say utilize this time if you're in your apartment or you can't get far out of your house except for a front yard utilize this time to actually develop another muscle that isn't your running muscles um, or to strengthen your core and to then learn to develop the muscle of stillness. I think that's, I think yeah. those two things I would say are important. Now I will do a cheap plug for my, uh, for my CrossFit community. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> because we're actually putting out videos, uh, 30 minute videos every day right mm -hmm. now. Or six okay. days a week, Monday through okay. Saturday. So if you go to YouTube and you type in CrossFit Edwardsville, um, Edwards, E-D-W-A-R-D-S, Edwardsville, mm -hmm. CrossFit Edwardsville. Um, it's in Edwardsville, Illinois. But um, we're putting out 30-minute videos every day of mostly body weight exercises mm -hmm. or dumbbells. If you don't have a dumbbell, we've told people to use water jugs, whatever mm -hmm. they can find. Um, but, man, I'm... I'm more sore from the last two days of those than I was <laughs> from like the last two weeks of just other exercises I was doing. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, that, that'd that mm -hmm. be something for you to do. One of the things that I, I wanted to jump on here, here as well, you talked about, you talked about learning stillness and the, the, the ultra marathon mindset coaching that I do, uh, st that I began that before I started running. The, mm. the, the mental discipline, uh, I was, you know, my story, I, I, I lost 30 pounds in 2017, changed my I, diet. Yeah. And so I did that with the mindset training that, uh, the mindset training I needed for, for a lot of other things, but also for losing weight. And so I'd lost the weight and then a friend of mine ran a 50 mile trail race. And I said, well, that looks like fun. I bet I could do that now that I've lost weight. And so that, so I, so I was doing this mental work before I became an ultra marathon runner. Now I, sure. I, I made the decision to run 50 miles the following year. And so I started out and at zero and, and went 50 miles the following year, but, uh, but I brought in the the stillness or you know call it the meditative technique the yeah. meditation into my running because the the meditation technique that i use is a connection between the mind and the body yeah and so so as i'm running the same the same disciplines or the same same process that i have when i'm when i'm sitting still and learning stillness it is it is a connection between my mind and my body i'm i'm working and, and that's and you know any any kind of meditation it's there's a discipline there's a there's a work there's there's work you have to do to learn it and you know i i really was bad at it when i first started sure. meditating i was i was awful and um and but i <laughs> and i think that's why so many of so many people struggle with it is because it yeah. is hard it's 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 like it's not fun it's not easy it's it's another form of training. It's another form of training. It's it's yeah. another muscle. It's a mental muscle that that yeah. And but I brought that into my running and and learning learning my running form. And it's still it's still a discipline I have to practice. I I was out running and I'm in the stage race and I was out and, and my mental process fell apart and I was just struggling in the middle and I was only six miles mm -hmm. and and so but I but I was able to work through that and bring myself back and and. But that connection between the mind and the body, and that's that's something that I have been, especially with with everyone, with everything that is going on and the, the stuff that people are dealing with. There's a there's other ways that I've been finding to try to try to make that connection between the mind and the body. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's a I've, I'm balancing on a pole. I've I've got this inch and a yeah. half steel, <laughs> inch and a half steel pole, and I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to strengthen my feet. Also loosen my hips, 
and and I've also as I was as I've been working on this because I my balance I was I was not able to do it for not again something I'm not good at it was it's brand new and I you know I just, but I have to keep working at it yeah but I've I'm realizing that that same mind body connection is there when I'm trying to balance on the pole and so That's exactly the, right. so it there, there's other ways and and the, you know, it's not just to sit down meditate. Uh, because I know a lot of people struggle with that. And, but as I, as I have why I find the insight timer so interesting, because I can choose a five minute guided meditation (laughs) or a 10 minute and literally like you can learn, you can take meditation courses Mm -hmm. to actually get better at it. Like, can you sit still for five? Yeah. Yeah. Now let's try seven in this week. Let's try Like, Yeah. I, I, um, I agree with you. It's, it takes a bit. And then the better than of learning that of, of learning, what what I've what I have learned what the biggest takeaway I had from that is learning how to direct and focus my attention. Yes. Because because when my mind is on idle, my mind is on idle. It does either there's, there's two things. It will uh, get my two. It, I <laughs> idle. Mirror, it's mirror. I idle at yeah. seventy. To quote Bill Burr. There's, I there's, idle at seventy. <laughs> yeah. There's there's two things that that my mind will do is I will think about the past, and yeah. and I'll replay. I I replace stuff. Failures and things that I said in junior high. Oh yeah, and I mean, the, I mean, I've got a good memory, and so you know, I can I can remember the exact words, I can exa- remember the exact feelings, and I feel this shame and regret, and and it just it just and that it's like a movie that plays over, and it's Isn't that interesting? it's it's random. I mean, it's, it's there's it's like there's this part of my mind that waits for an opportunity to play a movie that's going to make me feel like crap, yep. and. Uh, and so if my mind is idle and if I'm, you know, that, that can come up and then one of those leads to another and it can, and it can spiral down into this, yeah. if I don't direct my attention and I've learned that when those things start happening, it's like, wait a minute, I can think what I want. I don't, you know, that's, I, I, I have the control. I mean, I have the ability to think something different than this whole spiral of, of stuff. So if I'm not paying attention, yeah. that can happen. The other thing that can happen is that my mind will look into the future and spin out all kinds of worst case scenarios mm-hmm. and, and worry and anxiety. And so the the balance of of you know not letting my mind run away from me and learning how to focus my attention is a discipline. It's it it was something I've been bad at for most of my life. And yeah. just in just in recent years, I've learned that you know that my mind I can decide to, the, my mind doesn't have to take all of that, you know, it doesn't have to produce all that crap because that settles into your body. We and really it's just, let it, it just, we yeah. really let negative thinking take up a lot of real estate. Yeah. 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 And so that's, that has been the thing that, and, and I've been talking about that. Uh, I've been doing more Facebook lives kind of like pop on every once in a while and just, mm-hmm. but, but it's kind of been that theme of, of taking this time to learn how to focus your attention, focus, focus on something other than the news, yeah. not that you, and, and that doesn't mean you ignore it, but it, but it means yeah, but that you put it in don't perspective. Focus on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give it, give it literally about 10 minutes of your day. Mm-hmm. And, and, and now is the time everybody to skill up in a skill you're wanting to develop. So if it is meditation, if it is learning a new, learning a new fitness behavior, whatever it might be, is it, cleaning up your diet? Is it cleaning up the garage, cleaning up the garage? (laughs) Is it sitting down to write that book that you've talked about writing for so long? Um, I think, I think we have to be very careful. And I think this is part of what you're talking about here, Eric, when you say the, the stillness is a, is a muscle that's developed because this right here is still one of the biggest problems we face. Mm Mm-hmm. Because even in quarantine, I can look at this. Yes. Quarantine, shelter in place, whatever the heck it's called right now, mm-hmm. this week. I can sedate through this for hours on end. And literally my children and my whole life can be experiencing in front of my face. And I'm stuck here mm-hmm. with the screen. And so even if the skill is to let go of this for a little bit. Yeah. And to um, usually my wife and I are putting these away by 7 o'clock at night. So that we can really, you know, and even some days when I'm like, hey, I'm done working at five, that thing goes in my bedroom, I plug it in, I don't look at it again mm-hmm. for for the rest of the night because I don't want it. Um, and so how can you, in order... 
I lost the audio. <laughs> I hit the mute button. My, my phone dropped and it hit the mute phone, button. Phone hit the mute button. So with this, how can we also unplug from this so that we can dial into what our, our hearts and our minds and our spirits are telling us? And I think that's important. Yeah, and, and the and the unplug doesn't have to be completely get get out of the No, no, no. The, you know, Don't it's, disable it's your make, it's making it's making making margin. I mean I've I have yeah, friends it's who boundaries. Have, yeah. I have friends who have, have disabled disabled their account. And uh, and for me, you know, trying to get to trying to get my coaching business started, Brenda has Brenda's been telling me you need to spend more time on Facebook <laughs> because right. I no, was just, for sure. Because uh, you know, that was one of those things that I would I could I could I didn't have that problem, but I do know there's a lot of people that it's. Uh, I have to remember remind myself to get online and, and make sure that I keep keep engaged. I'm uh, I'm horrible at consistency online. Yeah, um, yeah. I'll do it for but, a while, uh, or I'll do it to to yeah. distract myself. You know, TikTok is TikTok is even even worse. I mean, because they they just roll roll right through, and you you know. Yeah, I can't get on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> My kids want me to just so they can learn all the new dances, and I'm like, yeah. uh, no. Yeah. But uh, but no, it's it's the, one of those things that that uh, that I I've it's you, know, you set a boundary. It's like okay, I'll do this, exactly. do it and enjoy it, because yep. the, the the thing that I found is that the the distractions, anything that I use to distract or or to to medicate to to try to to get to reduce the pain, you mm -hmm. do it, but you don't enjoy it. And no, and there's something very powerful about sitting in the pain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I've, I've learned how to, if I'm going to do something and, you know, do it and enjoy it. And then, you know, then it's done. And yeah. so uh, for sure. For sure. So anyway, thank you so much, Dallas. I appreciate this. I know our, our time thank, has, been, thank you. has been gone for, for a while. I mean, we, we had this, the, uh, well, issues you of, and I, uh, you and I can talk for hours here. on end if we don't, <laughs> if we don't limit ourselves. Um, so. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I do, I would like to say, uh, um, to to anybody listening to this, you're not alone in your in your mental health struggles, and you're not alone in your in your race in this life. Um, and so, having those running partners, as well as just having that community of people that you can rely on, is so key. It's so crucial. And yes, we're all social distancing right now, mm -hmm. but but there are ways to connect with people and. Um, and you can connect with me if you want. You can connect with Eric, obviously, here. But I think the most important thing is uh, for you to find a way to learn a new skill right now and to remain connected in a way that's mentally healthy for you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And how do, how can they connect with you? Where, where are you on social media? Uh, well, I'm actually switching over my website right now. So the best way to do it is just um, I'm on Facebook at Dallas Amston, and I'm on Instagram at Dallas Amston. So my name is Dallas. <laughs> <You're> Dallas. <laughs> There's a whole story behind that someday. Um, so uh, my name is Dallas Amston. That's A M S. D E N Dallas Amston. And again, I'm on uh, Facebook and Instagram, or if you want to join our private Facebook group, um, our defeating depression group, it's just, uh, you go to the groups page and it's defeating depression, facebook.com slash defeating depression under the groups. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. A lot. You. I appreciate it. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, switch screens here and, uh, I'll close out and then, uh, I'll awesome. talk to you. I'll talk to you. Appreciate it, my man. Later. Thank you, Eric. Thank you a lot. Bye. All right. Well, that is, I appreciate you who have stayed around and uh, and watched this. Uh, this is Trail Talk. I, I am doing. I have not set a regular schedule for this this broadcast, the live broadcast. Um, I, I'm leaning toward Wednesday nights at eight o'clock. Uh, but I know that some of the that may not fit in with some of the guests that I have. I have a, a whole list of guests that I would like to uh, like to bring on. So, uh, so just stay connected to my Facebook page. If you if you don't follow me on the, on and don't are seeing this and uh, don't follow my page, I invite you to hit the like button and the follow. Um, if you have any questions for me, if you, if you have anything to follow up, if you're seeing this on replay 
and uh, and have something that you'd like to ask, message me through uh, through the app here. Uh, you know, message me through this page, and I'll be glad to have a conversation with you. Uh, or also, you can uh, reach out to Dallas. This is a time that is somewhat unprecedented. We're all having we're all stuck at home. And it, having to face some of the things that maybe that we've let go, and I, and even you know, <clears throat> I'm not an expert at at life any either. We're all in process. I'm learning. There there are still things that in my life that I'm working on. It's not something where I can say, well, I'm going to teach you everything I know because I don't have any problems. There that we all have our stuff. And I've learned some tools to be able to work through my stuff. And so when those things come up, I can deal with it. Dallas shared some of the things that, that he goes through. And, and his depression is, is beat back. It's, it's, he has the podcast, Defeating Depression. But it still, comes, it still is something that will pop up and things can trigger it. So we're all in that process. We all need to help each other out. I hope you found this uh, conversation with Dallas valuable. I'm going to be working to, to continue to bring valuable, valuable content, things that can help us all as ultramarathon runners and whatever we face in life to be the best that we can be. Thanks for watching this. I, I wish I had, I'm, at some point, I'm going to have some sort of you know, cool outro that, uh, that I can do. But, uh, but yeah, for now, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.